Hi, I'm Red-Headed Riding Hood, Red for short. I'm going to read you William Barclay's Daily Celebration. <clears throat> Wet Blankets. When any new ideas are around, there are those who wave the red flag and there are those who wave the wet, the wet blanket. There can be no possible doubt which is the right thing to do. It is always a sin to discourage enthusiasm. Um, yes, my ex was notorious for this. <laughs> Nothing, Nothing. It's like you, you can do anything or have any idea that he thought was good. You know, any job I wanted to get, you know, and, and, and kind of like, um, he was very much just like my, um, dad. My dad was that way also. Never encouraging, never, um, and I think that's why it's, it's one of the main reasons I feel most of my brothers, except for my one brother that's left now, um, really always did not do well. My oldest brother tried, um, but he was on, he struggled with the drugs all of his life. And I feel like it is a lot of the reason why um, my brothers had such a difficult time of it. And I had five brothers. And um, they have passed on um, four of them and I have one brother left. One of the surest signs of age in any man is when youthful energy and enthusiasm on someone else's part leave him feeling tired and disapproving. W.L. Warkinson tells how once he was walking along the promenade in Brighton with his little grandson, they met an older minister. The old man was sadly disgruntled. Nothing in his world was right. Everything and everybody was all wrong. And to make matters worse, he was suffering from a slight touch of sunstroke. The little grandson had been silently listening. When they had left the gloom-stricken old man and had walked on for a short distance, the little grandson looked up at W.L. Watkinson and said, Granddad, I hope that you never suffer from a sunset. That's cute. Maybe the little fellow hadn't got the word quite right, but he had got the idea all right. There are some people who suffer from a sunset. They live in a dark, and discouraging world. A Christian should be a man, not of the sunset, but of the sunrise. A man or woman of encouragement and not discouragement. <laughs> That's what I want to be. And um, I also had, you know, a, a person um, in my life who I just feel like is too fear mongering and just negative. And I'm just like, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm just gonna back away from that because I just don't agree with that. I don't agree in being fear mongering. And um, that's why it's hard. It's, um, it's hard to have a balance. That's why it's so hard to talk politics because you don't want to be like the other side and be fear mongering and um, trying to scare people into um, um, supporting your candidate. That's not, that's not the way to do it. Um, and I just really don't like, um, but at the same time, I realize, I have realized that I'm like, why am I always making friends with these people? Because I realize I'm still um, recovering from the narcissistic abuse, especially when I was in it so long, is taking a long time. Because I am just naturally drawn to those people who are negative. 
And I've noticed that I'm drawn to those people that are negative, that are um, doomsdayers and you'll never do this. And, and it's one of the reasons why, like I talk about my mean doctor and why I responded to that, to him. And he said, um, you better do something now or you're going to become an insulin dependent diabetic. And he was just like so negative, terrible bedside manner. Um, he actually stopped being a doctor. He actually like retired early and I don't know what he's doing now, but everybody hated him because he was so mean, but I responded and I lost 30 pounds because I was used to negative, um, negative, you know, affirmation, negative, uh, motivation. And, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm trying to change now where I want positive people. I need positive people that lift me up and encourage me in, in my life. And, um, so yeah, I'm finally learning that. There are some people who have a very highly developed fa faculty of criticism. They see faults much more easily than they see virtues, and they find it much easier to criticize than to praise. There is one principle of criticism which we should always observe. No man or woman has any right to criticize any other man or woman unless he is prepared to do the thing better himself or unless he is prepared to help the other man to do it better. This is what Brene Brown talks about when she talks about the, um, the man in the arena, like the Theodore Roosevelt um, quote. You know, you don't have the right to criticize unless you're in the arena also. Only the man or woman who is prepared to have a go himself or herself is at least, or at least lend a hand has the right to criticize. Of all flags to wave, the wet blanket is the worst of all. And yet there are a large number of people in the church and in the world for whom the wet blanket is a national flag. We would go, we would, we will not go far wrong if we make it our aim to go through life always encouraging and never discouraging those who are willing to adventure and those who are doing their best. Um, that is a very good one. I like it. Let's all encourage someone today, okay? Don't say that no one cares for you because I do and God does too. Don't forget to pray for Red because Red is praying for you. Bye.